think I think we are going live. Uh, I'm waiting to see if the preview window catches up <laughs> because sometimes it's a little hard to tell. Yeah, there we go. Okay, it's a good 10 second delay. So that is good to know. And today it is just me. Um, Don's, Don's little doggy is getting snipped. So she's uh, going to pick him up right now, actually. And she's going to try and jump back into the chat window if she gets back in time. Um, Erica, on the other hand, has a migraine. And so she is sleeping, I hope. Uh, because what's worse than a migraine? Not too many things. Migraines are eh. Um, but I have several things to share with you. Um, if you were over on Facebook, I did a little Facebook Live thing because I'm testing stuff out, uh, trying to figure out if there's a way to more immediately and spontaneously communicate with you guys because it's a lot of fun now that technology has finally kind of caught up. Uh, but when I went to the podcasters conference, uh, wow, was it last weekend? No, two weekends ago. Uh, I spoke and then went to Dallas. That was it. Uh, I spoke about cognitive anchoring and how that affects podcasters and how they, how they need to think about what their listeners are doing. And it went really well, I think. People, people came up to me and said that they thought it was helpful. So, um, But one of the people at the podcast convention was a guy who has a podcast. Oops. And what I love is on the back. Epic fails. So he's been doing it for a while, but the very first episode is him learning how to thread a machine. And, and it's great. And if you've seen Office Space and you like the fax machine, machine scene, it is well worth a little bit of a look-see. Um, and it's on YouTube. So it is Dad Sews on YouTube. He also has another show that he does with his kids. And you should probably preview it because, <laughs> because Epic fails. Um, he said he got to the point where he was watching, watching his kids watch TV and saw what they were watching and, and kept saying, what are we watching? This is horrible. And so he and his older son, I'm thinking oldest son, there are four of them and the son is the oldest. He and his son started a podcast and it is called, what are we watching? Hmm. And you can get to it at whatarewewatching.com. And it's actually a lot of fun. It's them kind of dissecting kids' TV shows, which are worth dissecting. But Christopher Lee, um, he's a stand-up comedian, among many other things. And he's the dad who has learned how to sew. Um, and uh, and it, it was kind of amazing because he and his wife... They adopted two kids, siblings, the older boy of the two, and then a younger girl. But they adopted them relatively recently, I think within the last two years. So they were big kids when they got adopted. His son is in fifth grade now, I think. I met him. He's adorable. Um, but they uh, shortly thereafter got pregnant. So now they have four kids, uh, and it was a surprise because they expected to have two. So he's doing a lot, but his, his stand-up is a little bit more raw than his regular podcast with his kid podcast. So if you're going to watch the So Dad um, or the Dad Sews, they put it. Um, just be aware that there will probably be language that little little kids probably shouldn't hear um but he also has for those who have mixed uh multiracial families he has another podcast 
or actually, I think this, this might just be the blog. It is Plaid Dad Blog, because many colors go into making up a plaid. And there's another cartoon of him. So that was that. And then I'm looking to see if I got anything else exciting and thrilling for you guys. Uh, no, those are all the ones that I think would be of interest. But I'm going to try and get him on, uh, on Craftlet as a one-off because I thought it was kind of interesting that of all the things that he wanted to learn how to do that were crafty, he wanted to learn how to sew. And his first episode is all about that. And he's gone from learning how to thread a machine to the point where he's, uh, the video podcast is now sponsored by, uh, oh crud, I can't remember the name of the sewing machine. It's not, it's not one of the ones that I have. <laughs> I think uh, it might be, uh, no, gone. I think it was a German machine. And the Crooked Knits, oh yay, congratulations on a new job. If we can all focus on getting Andrew a new job, that would be great too. And then we can rejoice with you. But um, I hope you can come back on another day after you get settled in your new job. Uh, Sam, my friend, who has the IV that she has to wear for hours and hours and hours uh, every six weeks, she asked for a new... Um, sleeve to go over the IV. She said that all the people who were sitting there getting their IVs at the same time saw her sleeve and said, oh, would your friend make one for me? I thought, hmm, no. Uh, Might have been Faf. Uh, people, people are putting the names of the machines in the chat room now. Uh, it actually might have been Faf. I thought it started with a D or an R, but I can't even think of one remotely that would fit that category, so I don't know. Uh, this is, these are the colors that Sam chose. I've just turned up the bright on my machine. So I did, the whole thing is just a tube of ribbing, but I alternated which color was being the knit and which color was being the pearl. And so it's a longer one. And, uh, and I, I had to wait to show it to you before I could send it. So now she will, uh, now she'll get the, <laughs> the new one. She just got back from Ireland. So she had, uh, she had a great time and oh my gosh, Crooked Knits, you got a job at a yarn shop. Congratulations. Yeah. You're going to have to bounce back in now, right? Cause then you can share stuff that's going on at your store. We could, you know, if you guys have sales or special things going on. Let us know. Um, the, my epic fail of the week wasn't so epic. It was just annoying. I thought I was on the last section, the very last section of my shawl. This is the, um, the Martina Bame pattern. And I went back and read, because I'm such a doof, I didn't read it first. Other. You, who taught high school, you, of all people, should have read it first. But she had a little explanatory bit, which I've probably left over at the other place where I was sitting and knitting. Um, Ekin and Kanten are uh, edges and corners. And so evidently, colloquially, in German, if you say somebody has edges and corners, um, it's uh, they're a, a strong solid person personality wise uh, not somebody who is going to crumble like a house of cards and vicky it is not a closed tube i'm glad you asked because she's not trying to keep her hand warm as much as she's trying to hide the iv so they put it in you know like mid forearm and this way she can lay the tube down flat and the sleeve will hold it in place so that it doesn't get tugged or anything like that but also, depending on what sleeves she has, like if she has kind of dolman sleeves or poofier sleeves, nobody will know that she has the IV. They'll just think that it's some kind of, some kind of funly one-arm knitting thing, thing, which is 
I think better than having people go, oh, why do you have an IV in your arm? Um, so I was, uh, as I was progressing through my shawl, I got to the fourth section. <laughs> and she provides very nicely a schematic of how the directions are going to go. She provided the schematic for everything except the last section. I added the arrow in there and and I wasn't sure if I did the right thing. And it wasn't working right. And so I, I sat back and I said, well, I'm gonna go a couple inches and then I'll I'll see if it's if it's starting to look right. Because I did mine differently since I wanted to do the shadow knitting thing. I made a right side and a wrong side, whereas the pattern is just written for garter. So it kind of there's a little bit more flexibility built into the Martina Beam pattern, the way it's written. But of course, why would I do the way it was written? So I got three inches in. It sure looked like I was doing the right thing. And I thought, ooh, well, this is all dark. In fact, I can show you the darkness part. Uh, this part's all, all dark. I should switch yarn so that I can start the next ball and mar work my way from the darkest down to the lightest now. So there's the dark. And you can see some of the color transition there. I thought that was the last dark. That wasn't the last dark. I had two more balls left that were in the bag from when I was on the airplane and I was, I was just so bummed. So I had to not only rip back from the little two or three inches that I did, but I had to rip back some of the, the long side uh, rip back so that I could there so that I could change colors again because let's see oh the blue does pop you know I haven't really looked at it from a distance so once I ripped back and I started looking at it again and you might say but Heather how noticeable would it really have been it's noticeable here are the two colors that I thought I ended with and here are the two that I was supposed to end with. Oh, wait, hang on. I can make that easier for you to see. So these are the two that I did end with initially. And those are the two, the darker ones that I should have ended with. And it's, I mean, that's a significant color change. So, so I went ahead and I ripped back and, uh, and I started knitting again. And then as soon as I did, I started to think, holy cow, I can't tell where, and by where, I mean which edge, which angle, was I supposed to go from the whoops, center point out, which would sort of mirror the original triangle, but not entirely, or should I go from the top edge down in and... So what did I do? I wasted half an hour. Half an hour that I probably really didn't have. But what I did was I schematic sized it. I'm just gonna make up words today. I got to see my student, my former student, Damani. If you're on Facebook with us, you probably saw a picture of Damani, my goofball student and me. Uh, being goofy together, which is kind of what we always did. But he's the one who came up with the word quotationalize. So, and, and he's, we were talking about it at the bar and the guy next to us said, you make up words? I, I guess he thought that it was an official job. And so we turned to him and said, yeah, actually, he's the one who came up with the word quotationalize. The guy's like, wow. And I thought, wow, you've been here drinking for a while. <laughs> So this morning what I did was I drew my own version of the schematics and I put little squares. Oh, darn it. Doing the same lighting thing again. I put little squares to show where one section would end and where I'd do the pivot and start knitting the next, whoops, this way the next uh, one of the triangles. And that helped some, but what I had to really do, um, 
It is so hard. I drew the whole thing, which is, <laughs> which is a barrel of fun. Um, it certainly prevented me from doing the things that I should have been doing probably, but I was hoping that I'd be able to finish it and have it to show for you today. And then it didn't happen and oh well, but I have a question. I have a question for you next week. I'll have the thing all the way done and I'll be able to show you two questions. Actually, one is. Do you ever find mental floss? And if so, the issue, September, October, 2016, has a whole page about knitting. Yay. And part of the page about knitting is about the, um, Oh, there it is. The Virtual Museum of Scientifically Accurate Fabric Brain Art. Which you've just got to love on the name alone. It's fantastic. But they actually have uh, anatomically correct knitted brains. I do not know if that means like the gray matter is a tube that she wound around anatomically correct or if she just cabled that exterior of a brain. I'm not sure. But they talk about that and they talk about knitting graffiti and... They talk a little bit about men, men knitting, and how women didn't used to be allowed to, and it was all the guys who got to do it, and then, then we got all egalitarian about it, um, or sort of egalitarian about it. So that was kind of nice, because it wasn't, it's under the heading pop culture syllabus, and it wasn't one of those, oh, knitting is the new yoga, the same way that, like anytime people who don't know what they're talking about talk about podcasting, they'll say, oh, and podcasting is going through a renaissance. It's not. The numbers have been going up steadily every year. The number of podcasts available and the number of people listening, the percentage of the, the percentage of total humans on the planet who listen is expanding every year. It's still less than 30%, which means you guys are extra special special. But the other question I had was, have you ever seen stationery like this? And if so, where? Because I want some and I got it from my mom and she doesn't remember. So it's a one sheet. She wrote on the, I'm going to call it the inside. The outside is, it looks, mm, I wanna get it all the way. Uh, it's a map on the bottom, two thirds, right? Cause this is foldable, it's pre-folded. But then on the top, it's instructions for how to make a paper airplane. <laughs> I love it. And yes, Tara, you are just better. All of you who are watching are better. And Craplet listeners are just generally better. Which I continue to maintain every time I meet someone. Yeah. I'd rather hang out with you guys than pretty much anybody else on the planet, except for a couple of other podcasters, but I hope they're going to start listening. So I love this stationery, right? It's all pre-folded. And then the paper airplane instructions part is actually perforated, not unlike St. Sebastian. So it's perforated down that fold so you could tear it off and then use the not quite square I'm sorry, I'm having so much trouble figuring out where middle is on this. Um, these two thirds, the bottom two thirds to make the paper airplane, which I love. I love the idea of that. It's fun. And I'd probably be more likely to send people letters if I had something like this. Uh, what is this? Teddy's Island, New Jersey Channel. Uh, it's, an old, it's an old picture, but everything is legal in New Jersey, so. Uh, if you figured that out, or if you know something about uh, stationery like that, let me know. Just You can put it in the comments here on the YouTube thing, or you can email heather at craftlit.com, or you can call 206-350-1642, and that's our phone number, our voicemail phone number. Uh, <laughs> last week, I think I may have actually said 
that Julius Caesar wrote in Italian. So that was wrong. Uh, I have a feeling I said ser several things that were wrong. I'm just hoping I didn't give anything away. I was so tired and sleep deprived after uh, Friday night, Saturday night, Friday night, Saturday night at the podcasting uh, conference, w which was no sleep. And then all day Sunday, which was September 11th, I flew to Dallas. That was weird. I, I think I posted on Instagram. The airport was empty. And, and it wasn't the whole day. It was just like for the first couple of hours that I was there, I left kind of mid-morning. Those first couple of hours, the place was just silent. And then by the time we boarded the airplane, it was, you know, kicking in again. But, but it was weird. And so then I flew the rest of the day, traveled. It took forever to get to the hotel because the cabbies kept getting lost. It's a Westin. It's the Westin downtown. They kept trying to take me to the Westin Galleria. If you are in Dallas, you know why. Um, I got nothing. But then the next night, and I still hadn't slept. Sunday night I didn't sleep because I was so... Mm. And then the next night I tried to record so that I could get just in the audio. Uh, yes, I know. So, uh, I apologize for saying that Julius Caesar wrote in Italian. Oops. And oh, Tara, you did a super, super speedy stealth search. Weddingshop.thenot.com slash product slash paper airplane wishing well stationary set. <gasps> mm, I will try this. Thank you. Um, and I'll, I'll go ahead and put that as an annotation in the live stream. I am learning all sorts of things about YouTube videos. Uh, some of them useful, actually, like how to put in the annotations so that you guys who are watching later will just be able to see a little button pop up that you can click on and it'll take you to the whatever it is that we're talking about. Um, I think that's it. I am going to record this week's episode and I'll tell you, but not anyone else, that this week we get two chapters. And you're going to be so glad that I did that. And then after the end of the second chapter, you're going to be so mad that I didn't do three. But they're long. We're getting into these long chapters. So sorry, but I tried to get you to a decent stopping point because I know we're not going to chat for a little while. But I also got, when I was at the podcasting conference, I got my t-shirt. So now, now I can tell people who I am without having to say, I'm a podcaster. Although it still means that they'll say, what's a podcaster? Um, speaking of that, and I'm going to mention it on the podcast too, this next Friday, not this week, Friday the 23rd, but next week, Friday the 30th, is, my calendar's over there, sorry, uh, International Podcast Day. They're trying to uh, pump up, push, celebrate the number of podcasts that have international listenership because that's one of the things that radio really can't do very well. And the way that they're gauging it is by iTunes reviews that come in between now and September 30th that are from other countries. Obviously, they still need some coming in from the States, but they want to see people overseas from the U.S. outside of the contiguous 48 plus Alaska plus Hawaii. They want to see people from, from the outside of the states um, responding because one of the things that we can't get, I don't know if you knew this, we can't get actual statistics from Apple iTunes. We don't know exactly how many people are listening. We don't know how many people are listening at the iTunes site. It's very strange when and where we get the statistics from. So we have a ballpark figure, but the, oh, it's, we know how many listens or how many start clicks we have. What we don't know is how many subscribers we have. And that's one of the things that they're trying to gauge based on the international reviews. Because if you're going to bother to go review a podcast, it's probably because you subscribe to it. 
Um, so if you are in another country and you feel like taking three or four minutes to go leave a review on iTunes, awesome. If you are feeling brave and gregarious, uh, on International Podcast Day, September 30th, it would be great if you were, I don't know, I'll put up a link to the Zazzle site that I've got the, um, I've got the podcaster t-shirt. Oh, actually, maybe I can show it to you while I'm here. Uh, the podcaster version of the t-shirt is PSBS on the front with the Craftlet logo, but the, <laughs> but the, I'm trying to get the picture. Um, but on the back, it has the logo, and then it says podcasting since before serial. PSBS, podcasting since before serial. And that was very popular at the podcasting conference. I'm sorry, I'm doing two things at once, which is always dumb but um but then i got a version of the shirt for uh, a guy who's been a podcast buddy of mine for a really long time um several years and he's the uh, you may have heard of dave jackson who is the ask the podcast coach he has um school of podcasting sop and i made him a shirt because he's been podcasting a year longer than i have But you'll notice that the top part is his logo, the School of Podcasting. This is the back of the shirt, and then it says Podcasting Since Before Serial. Well, if you want, you can get one that says PS, uh, PL, SBS, Podcast Listener, Since Before Serial. And that'll have the Craftlet logo on it. Um, so if you do something like that, or if you just, you know, if you're at a coffee house, you put a post-it note on the table next to you, I'll help you find a podcast. Ask me about what podcasts are. Um, anything. It would be so cool to get stories from you, either on the voicemail line or emails, because the, the thing that we started to find out in, in me doing the talk that I did, but then conversations that happened afterwards, is that the, the people like you who have been listening to... Uh, podcasts tend to listen to way more than one and tend to stick around for uh, several different reasons some of them being just you like the content some of it being you get to the point where you just like the person because you feel like you know each other like I I even feel like I know you guys because you pop up here all the time and I get to see we're writing back and forth really it doesn't matter how short the writing is it really does make you feel like you know people um but the, uh, the other thing is that podcast listeners get proprietary, understandably so, about their podcasts and things that their podcasts do and what they like. It's like the comments that we get about don't change the music because the, the music is the cue. Um, I realized, <laughs> because I'm me, that I like podcasts that have longer openings because it gives me time to get all my stuff together so that then I can sit and do something or I can check on the recipe before I start cooking and the podcasts that had really short intros were harder for me to listen to because I didn't have enough time to arrange life in order to be able to listen so everybody's got their own thing but the one of the wonderful things about meeting all these people at the podcast conference was that the even though we were completely different. I mean, I'm the only person doing anything like crap lit. I've never met anybody who does a literature book podcast because honestly, they'd be crazy. It's a lot of work. I don't know why anybody else would start doing this now. Uh, it didn't used to be this much work. Now it is. Um, but they, they all had a thing and it was their thing. And the people who were listening to them were listening because they shared that love of the same thing. So one guy was a bicyclist and 
uh, a health nut. And so his whole take on health was a little different from what I'd heard before. And that's what he did his podcast about. And those are the people who he interviewed. And he's got, he's got great listeners. He's got some really cool things. And then there's the So Dad uh, video podcast and his What Are We Watching podcast with his son. There were other people who'd been podcasting with their children. Um, there were several just storytellers. And, and it was just really neat to see how many people had kind of specialized niche interest areas and that not only did they have a podcast that they were either making or listening to, but that if you didn't like one of the podcasts or one of the podcasters, there were lots of other podcasts in that niche that you could go listen to. And that's why on the International Podcasting Day, I thought, God, it would be great if all the Craftlet people did what I think you guys do naturally is you teach. You know, you, you guys are really amazing in part because we all share the same relentless curiosity disease. But that also means that you know a lot of really cool stuff because you're so curious. And it would be great if you shared that with other people and helped them find a podcast in their niche. I mean, it's got to feel if if your whole thing is not just stamp collecting, but collecting stamps from 1838 France. And there's a podcast about that. How amazing would it feel to find that and to find out that you're not the only person who's loving the same thing. So I will uh, have a reminder up on uh, up on uh, the show notes. And I'll have a little logo that you can, a little button that you can use as well. And um, I'll put a reminder, a quicker reminder on the podcast for this week. And um, I think that's it. Oh, yeah. Podcast listening. Uh, I knew I had the statistics here. 21% of the population listens to at least one podcast per month and 13% listen weekly. That's all. Hmm. Anyway, that's it. Uh, I think Don is probably still out helping her little doggy. who's so sad. And, um, and that's it. I'll talk to you on the podcast at the end of the week. And then there are two episodes coming out in October. There'll be a newsletter coming up between now and uh, the end of the week because... I have our first sponsor for Craftlet. Um, so I will, uh, I'll be sharing information about that. And it's actually a pipe. We have the little, those little fruit flies. We had a banana up here at some point. And that one got too close. Uh, oh, podcast listener. Oh, his thing is right up our alley. You will be so happy. It's, um, it's great to have a sponsor who feels like, oh, this is cool. I would love to share this with everybody instead of, hi, go to stamps.com and blah, 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 blah. So have a great week. Uh, have a good several weeks. And I will, uh, on the podcast on Friday, I'll let you, let you all know the schedule on how we're going to do the YouTube streams uh, next month where it gets complicated because of Paris. So that's it. Take care. Have a great week or two or three, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.